Psalms 8 by um, David. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Uh, if, if you can, just, just kind of like really take this upon yourself and try to see the waves that, that David is going through of like seeing himself, seeing God. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. His glory is in heaven, but through our praises, he establishes a stronghold against your enemies, God's enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. That's how powerful our praises are. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. And at the time, <laughs> David labels some, some very very valuable things of the time. All flocks and herds, animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, and all that swim the paths of the seas. I wonder what, what David would have said if he was like here now, what kind of things he would have said instead of animals. <laughs> all in all, he said he put everything under our feet. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What, what Micah just kind of pieced together is uh, is v just shows such a an important important thing that we need to do is make sure that we're pruning something tonight. As he talked about the the ways that the devil has woven things in, and the Lord actually has some good things that He wants grown, but just there's a, been a lot of twisting, and it just kind of had this image of how the Psalm says like He's put a crown on you. Like he has, has just a just a righteousness and a goodness and his somebody giving you a crown is just it's just a crazy thought. But the devil kind of doing that same thing and, and your identity and your nature just being woven together in an ugly, ugly crown that we've been wearing for so long that it's time to to cut it off of our heads. So it's like woven within who we are. But pruning and cutting these things off with the Lord and, and taking back on the glory, the holiness, and the righteousness as the person he's called you is required, but it's required as you go home too. So we're not going to leave yet, but um, if this just settles in and as, as a moment here, make sure the first thing that you do is you go home and you instill a habit right away. 
you prune it here and you, you take that crown with you and you put it on when you're at home. So Lord, I pray over all of us that we would not leave here without action. Jesus, we ask for your, for your pruning tonight. We ask for your clothing. And Lord, we want to show you respect. We want to show you honor. We want to show you how grateful we are that we want to operate in how, who you call us to be. So Lord, as we go home, I pray a blessing over everybody here in Jesus' name that we are just filled with a bubbling over wanting and groaning and yearning for a change in our identity that we would grow closer and we would be so eager as we go home to make this solidified in who we are every single day of our lives. Lord, whatever that action is, I pray that you would bless us and you would rest it upon our minds for what we exactly need to do, what task it might be to put your crown back on and operate that way in purity and righteousness and as your saints in Jesus' name. So as, as I was praying, um, just for God to reveal more about like what are these twisted pieces of myself, right? Um, and to reveal those, he revealed one that I don't think it's necessarily mine, but I was thinking of them as, as twisted gifts or twisted giftings, right? Um, and I think if it's a twisted gift of discernment, what does that look like then when it's twisted? And I think it looks like, I think we've all met somebody or know somebody who it seems like they're always making up excuses. You know what I mean? Like excuses for this or that or whatever, but I think if you are find yourself making excuses for something, you actually have the gift of discernment. Because you're doing all of these mental gymnastics and ways to get around something of, of having the blame put on you, but you only know how to do gymnastics around something if you know where it is, right? So you have to have an idea, you have to know where the truth is in order to skirt around it. So I think if you find yourself making excuses and excuses and you're not to blame, it's never your fault or there's another reason, you actually have a gift of discernment and you're putting all of your energy in the wrong place. Wow. If we could just, if we could just bow our heads, if we could just close our eyes. So many powerful, words and scalpel of the great physician <laughs> are coming forth tonight. And I think if we're, I think if we're, if we're, if we're not careful, we're going to take tonight and we're going to attempt to add to our lives. But friends, I, I got to tell you, Jesus isn't interested in more of you. Jesus is only interested in all of you. Jesus isn't interested in simply more of you. He is only interested. He only paid for. He only went to the cross. His blood was only intended, not for just simply more of you, but all of you. This past week, in my study time when I was just praying, I was going through the creation accounts because I'm nerdy and I like to hang out in Genesis. And all of a sudden, the Lord just dropped down in my heart. He said, Matt, do you know when the last time I created something was? And I was like, yeah, it's on the sixth day. And then he rested. And then he was like, wrong. It was on the third day when I rose again because I created new creations in Christ Jesus. You, the church, my bride, you who were the last thing and the newest thing that I created. I made new creations in Christ Jesus. I'm not interested in simply more of you. I am interested in all of you. Amen? And so tonight, as we round out this night, there's two things that come to mind. 
If you're someone who is just perpetually, I mean perpetually, I mean pathologically, feeling like you are just sick all the time, I believe prophetically right now the Lord wants to take your ashes and exchange you beauty. And if you are someone who is perpetually sick, I believe God wants to awaken the gift of healing in you tonight. That what the enemy meant for evil, God wants to turn it for good tonight. So if you are someone with perpetual sickness in your body, would you come forward? And I believe that Micah and Zach would love to pray over you and ignite this gift. Boldly, boldly. Come on. There's no shame in being perpetually sick especially when we shame the devil with it tonight. So if that's you, come forward. If you're always sick, if you're always coughing, if you're always having migraines, if something's always, 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 come forward, yeah. Come forward, come forward. That's you, that's you, that's you. Come on, just begin praying. Don't wait for me, just begin praying. Let's just see the Lord do something amazing. Let's shame the devil. I still feel like there's one more. I feel like there's one more. I feel like there's one more person. Come on, if you're perpetually sick, he wants to take your ashes and exchange them for beauty tonight. There it is. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, there's more. Hey, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the other one, if I could have Pastor Evan, I don't know where you got off to, and uh, Hamza, if I could have you up here too. There's another one, there's another one. Tonight, if you're someone whose sexuality is just completely out of God's order, this moment's for you. See, one of the biggest things right now is that sexuality has become such an idol that we worship, that we have designed ourselves to be this worshipped item. We are our own golden calf right now. And so whether it's pornography, whether it's women, whether it's men, whatever it is, if there's something that your sex drive is actually driving right now, this moment's for you because I want to tell you, the Lord wants to take you being driven by your sex drive and he wants to replace that. Again, beauty for ashes tonight. He wants to take that. And he wants to take you from being a worshiper of self to a worshiper of him. See, you're a really great worshiper. You're an incredible worshiper, but you feel like you can't engage in worship. It's because you have spent more time worshiping yourself and worshiping others and worshiping the golden calf of our generation called sexuality than you have been worshiping the precious lamb, Lord Jesus. So if that's you, no shame, because we're going to shame the devil with it tonight. If your sexuality has been out of order, man or woman, I don't care. Come forward. Come forward. In fact, my love, Pastor Adrian, could you come forward too in case there's any women in the place? If that's you, there is no shame. We're going to shame the enemy with it. We are going to take that off of you tonight. We are derobing that. If that's you, would you just come forward and receive prayer right now? Come forward. If your sexuality is out of order, no shame. We are derobing it. We are derobing it. We are taking that from the enemy. He doesn't get a stronghold. He doesn't get an inch. He doesn't get anything. Come on. There it is. And if there's a woman in the place, we do have Pastor Adrienne up here. There's no shame. There's no shame. Beauty for ashes. Twisted is exactly right. Young Micah was exactly right. Twisted. It's twisted. But there's redemption. There's a beauty. There is a majesty. There is a magnificent masterpiece about to be made out of your sexuality. Your sexuality in its right place within man, woman, and marriage and covenant to God. Your sexuality in that place, it's not just a burning desire between two people. It actually becomes an altar to worship God with because you are taking what he's given you and you are keeping it in its rightful place out of its rightful time. Father, right now, we just take what is out of order in all these areas, Lord, and we just place them in order. We place them at your feet. We put them on your altar. We say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Would you come, God, and would you blow upon these ashes, and would you bring beauty from them, God? Would you spark such a flame, God, right now, Lord, all of these different areas that Micah laid out, that Zach laid out, that Pastor Evan laid out, God, tonight, Lord, would you just come, and would you rule over, and would you take over every single area in our lives, tonight, Lord Jesus, God. We know, God, we know, we know, we prophetically declare, you didn't come to take part, you came to take over. And tonight, Lord, would you take over our sexuality? Tonight, Lord, would you take over our sickness, God? Tonight, Lord, would you take over our gifting, Lord? Tonight, Lord, would you take what the enemy meant for evil? And would you take it over, God? And would you redeem it? And would you bring it back to life in Jesus' mighty name, Lord? Holy Spirit, begin to minister in this room, Lord. 
Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you for sending Jesus to the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for sending the Holy Spirit to rest on us and to live within us, God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Today, as we go from here, these next few moments, Lord, like Zach said, would we replace would we replace that habitual sin with a holy habit, God? Lord, before we turn on the laptop to look at pornography, would we get on our knees, God? Would we get on our knees, God? Would we get on our knees and just start praying to you, God? Before we're sick, God, before we can't come out of bed in the morning, before we decide that we can't go any further, God, would we pick up our phone and would we text somebody and say, hey, are you sick? What can I be praying for? Does anybody in this group chat have something sick going on? I want to pray for you, God. We're going to combat it, Lord. We're going to combat it with Christ, Lord. We're going to combat it with calling, Lord. Father, I just thank you for everything you're doing in this room right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we are exchanging beauty, taking your beauty. We're giving over our ashes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. You are your good Father.